welcome back. So continuing from the last episode, I'm just gonna continue with all the little one percenters in this engine bay, including the steering column, radiator pipes, and fixing up a loose play in, in the power steering box. And then once they're done, I'm gonna to start to have a look at starting this piece. So uh, let's get into it. All right, first things first, I'm gonna have a look at this steering column. This is the original steering column. I was, I think I mentioned on the last video, I was gonna think about actually uh, swapping this or buying a new one that doesn't have column auto on the honey pot. Um, but what I'm thinking is I'll just uh, clean this one up and put it back in the car. Uh, the bearings and everything on this is pretty sound, like there's a tiny, tiny bit of play, but nothing that's gonna be, you know, worth spending about 250 bucks on bearings on this thing. So they are quite expensive, the lower and upper bearing. Um, if anything, I might get this intermediate bearing shaft, um, or this intermediate bearing and the boot, obviously in that need, that boot needs to be replaced, it's perished. Um, but the actual bearings inside there are a square kind of weird square bearing that slide and you pack it with grease. Now, I don't know, how you know if they're loose or not. Um, this feels reasonably tight, so it might just be need to clean up and repacking with grease and it's all right. Um, but I remember before I actually disassembled this, there was some play in the steering wheel and you know, you could sort of like move it and obviously nothing was happening with the tires. It was just like, there was just play. And that can either mean that um, this is sort of loose, but generally it's probably more of an indication that this down here, which is, um, I've got a, a Nola theme one in there, which apparently are pretty crap. Um, the original ones are, are, are known to hold position. They're a, a rubber one, and there's ones for power steering and ones for just standard steering. Obviously this has got power steering, um, but you can see, so that's just some play. I don't know anything about power steering on these um, other than the fact that this was refurbished um, about eight years ago, but really haven't done much driving considering this has been off the road for six. So yeah, there's some play there, but also there's some sort of sponginess in this thing, which is what it's designed for. But, you know, I think replacing this with the original rubber one uh, could potentially help that. But I think the main issue is this power steering uh, movement. And there's some play there. It's probably too much play. Like you can have a little bit, but I don't think you should have that much. Um, Obviously that's, you know, you don't want to have play in your steering at all. So I think I saw on a YouTube clip in America that these guys were adjusting um, the hydraulic tension inside the box by a screw somehow. But I don't know how you do that on this. You know, this obviously needs to be refed with um, power steering fluid and things like that. But I don't think that would be fixing that anyway. I think there needs to be some kind of adjustment done. Uh, to fix that. If not, then it needs a rebuild. Um, but considering it's already been rebuilt, unless someone was was uh, stuffing me around, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'd like to get some thoughts on that, whether that's actually fixable via adjustment somewhere, whether it's that little, that there, little Allen key, I don't know. That's the only area that I can see that has got some kind of a, um, access so whether you can adjust the pressure on this and tighten that up that way or if there's something more sinister going on let me know in the comments because i'd be keen to uh figure it out before i go and spend a lot of time and money on this thing so for now i'm just going to clean it up put it back in once it's cleaned up and down the track once it's drivable and i want to spend some time on fixing it up then i'll look at maybe even replacing the whole thing or fixing the whole thing again, taking it out and doing it properly. But for now, I think it's fine to uh, get it back in the ute and tick it off so that we can get this thing reassembled and started. Okay, so I've cleaned it up as much as I can, taking out that intermediate bearing on that shaft. Um, 
And I was looking at, I was just cleaning up the steering wheel. Obviously I want to replace the steering wheel from the old one, put a GTS on it. Um, you're not supposed to hit that center screw to get it off because you can actually damage the shaft. <clears throat> shaft on these things is hollow in internally and it has a couple of plastic safety pins on it. And that's designed for a crumple zone in an impact so you don't get a shaft driven straight through your skull. It sort of shears off and it shears off and um, yeah, it crumples in that, uh, in that area there. So if you do hit that hard enough, you can actually break those plastic shims as far as I've been, my research tells me. So they recommend in the manual that you get a puller uh, to pull this off. And that is generally two screw points there. Where I've got those two bolts. They screw in and then there's a, um, they go through a plate and there's a big bolt here that you screw down and it just levers that whole plate off. But <clears throat> I don't have one. I don't really want to hit that center piece of the hammer. So I'm just going to utilize this flaring tool, which I reckon if I put it on the center there and just get some two wires that uh, sit around those two bolt heads and lever across and sorry, wrap them around these two hooks there. I'm hoping that that'll be enough to uh, create enough force to lever it off. So always try and use what you got. Otherwise you're gonna to have to order a kit, $79 for a lever, another week. I don't have the time and I'm sick of spending the money. So um, we'll give this a go. Actually had a change of plan. So instead of using that puller, I decided to step it up and just copy what uh, the original puller did and just weld a nut on there, get the two longer bolts, fashion up a bit of an angle. So pull up, we'll give that a go. All right, so that uh, steering wheel came off really quite easily actually but i'm glad i did that tool made that tool because you just don't want to bang on that center rod there just in case you do some damage so yeah if you've got a bit of angle or two bits of uh, flat steel like i did it's probably easy just to get an angle support it the two nuts and that main center um bolt and you got yourself a um and you got yourself a Holden H-Series steering wheel puller for next to nothing. They're selling these for about 80 bucks on eBay, so there you go. It's worth doing. So now I'm just going to take what I can apart. I'm not, I've decided I'm not going to do these bearings. Yeah, I don't want to risk breaking that honeypot where the bearing is. And yeah, I just want to get it finished. So I'm just going to re basically repaint it and then put it back together. So I've got the indicator mechanism there, um, the rubber gasket that goes around the honeypot. That's the difference between a HZ and a um, WB is that uh, hazard light out of the honeypot. Um, so that's all in there. Came out pretty easy. Now inside the honeypot, obviously you can reach the locking mechanism or the key barrel is shot like most of these they wear out over the course of uh, 30 years, 40 years. So yeah, I need to replace that just for security reasons. Even though you can start it without a key. Um, so in order to get that out, get access through that casting, I just scratched that out there. It's like that little, yeah. So that's actually solid. You can just tap it through with a little tapper. And then there's a spring in there. Now when you do it, you've got to have this on accessories or lock. I'll try both. Uh, otherwise it won't pop out. So you just get something through there. I'm gonna play around with it, a little skinny screwdriver or something and see if I can get it out. So the way, the method that worked for me is I gotta have the key as far back as possible. Because it's so old, all the markings have worn off, but basically the key back as far as you can get it and then you push it, I push that into the gap, the recess, push that spring sort of to the side. It came out, so.
All right, let's get the honey pot off. Yeah, that's the uh, locking mechanism there. And also, yeah, goes down to uh, the circuit. Switches down further down. So now, in order to get that out, the actual rod out, you've got to just remove this clip down here. That's your lower bearing there. That'll be stuffed as well, no doubt. So looks like I'm up for a bearing kit. Um, and they're not cheap, these bearings. Um, I think it was about 150 bucks for two bearings or something. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna remove this now, slide it, and I'll have it all apart and I can start cleaning it up, painting it, and uh, I'll order those bearings so I can get the thing redone again. All right, so I did a little bit of research on this um, upper bearing and apparently they're pressed in from factory. You can see it's got some movement there. Um, that lip folds over the actual bearing and then underneath, there's actually an indent there. So you can't push it through, it's actually, it actually stops. So, a lot of people just get new honey pots or new secondhand ones that have a decent bearing in them um, and just replace it. If you do punch this out, you'll snap this um, casting off and then you basically got a epoxy in the bearing or put a grub screw through the side or something. Essentially, it's, you fuck it doing it and um, to fix it up back up again, it's never gonna be as strong as it is now. So, it's not a precision bearing apparently, although that's definitely got some play um, and it is warm, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna repack it because I don't wanna go through the headache of, you know, damaging this honey pot, finding another one. It's just like, you might as well have just bought a new steering column. So yeah, this is uh, just gonna get repacked um, and then put back on and it will do. It's not uh, severely damaged or anything after flushing it out. So I've heard that that is a solution that you can do, just repack them and get a few more years out of them. All right, so I'm in it now. I've got everything disassembled. I've got the uh, the shaft there, and then there's a sort of a casing on top of that. It's a hollow casing. It sits inside this crumple um, casing here. So if you have a crash, that will crumple. And these are the two plastic pins that um, will snap in, a, in case of an accident. And you can see that's like a telescopic um, shaft. So it'll snap those two pins and the thing will go forward with that crumple zone so that you don't get a steering column straight through your face. Um, so what I've done is I've, got, I've actually repacked that uh, lower bearing and you know it's grimy and whatever. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I can actually get a reef a, a um, old stock steering column for a hundred bucks off of WB, it's uh, pretty much mint. So I'm just gonna do that because once I factor in buying a new bearing there, buying new bearing there and compromising the honey pot on in the process, um, replacing the boot, which I've already actually bought and I'll put that on this anyway. Uh, you know, you're running up to about 200 bucks easy. So, you know, there's a reason why um, people buy aftermarket steering columns. So I'm gonna put this back together. I'm gonna to paint it anyway, um, just to get it looking better than it is. And you know, it's still gonna be a functional steering column. And yeah, it was, on, it was on the ute when I got it. So I don't particularly wanna get rid of it. Yeah, it's a good process and learning experience to tear one of these down and see what it's, uh, how it's made. So that's what I'll do now, so just time lapse it all, get it done, put it back together and move on.
Okay, so I gave that a bit of a paint anyway. Installed the boot, and that was a bit of a pain, actually. You just gotta watch it. This clip's really hard to sort of get in. You've gotta lap it over so that this curved bit, that curved section there is gonna go over the flat section. But in the process of doing that, I've sort of torn a little bit of the rubber boot at the base with a metal ring. It's not gonna matter. Um, because this is just a cruiser anyway, but yeah, I mean, the whole idea of that is to keep water out, so you get a nice seal in there. Obviously, pack it with grease. I've packed it full of grease in there and slid those in, so that's it. I'm uh, that was a big job that steering column to restore, and you know, it's it's looking good, but it's not 100% because of that uh, honeypot bearing, is still the old Ratley bearing, but. You know what, I'm happy to push ahead with that because to replace one of these, to recondition them fully is $800 um, and to find one that's, you know, in good nick that hasn't been restored is almost impossible. We probably end up having the same loose bearing anyway. So have a crack if you've, uh, if you've got one and um, it's probably better off for it. Just replace that sir clip spring the wash in front of it i can't remember if this had tension on it before but at the moment it's uh loose so i don't know if that's something i've done in the process of restoring it but everything has gone back in and there's only two screws left in the box which is to hold the uh pad onto the steering column uh, sorry steering wheel so i've also restored this bracket which actually suspends the whole steering column onto the frame underneath the dash um, so that's it I've restored the steering column to the best of my ability at least anyway and that will be good enough until I get in there and drive it if I'm not, I'm not happy with it I can always you know, said buy a new honey pot restore that section um, or you can even upgrade these. I've seen honey pots with like a billet uh, bearing, but also they have an electronic ignition in there as well. So you can push start it, which I thought was pretty awesome. So they're about $600, I think, to replace that with an electronic ignition. But that would be pretty cool to, if you're going to do it, do it properly, I reckon, and get that. I can't remember who makes it, but I'll do a follow-up video if I decide to do that in the future and, uh, and, and review it as well. So that's uh, installed, put a bit of silicon around that plate there, goes against the firewall. Obviously you get water coming in there, so it's important. And it's got a, a ridge to actually silicon that. Um, but it might even pay to silicon after it sets, give it another silicon around the front as well to stop any water coming through. Um, starting to look at the goods with the unique parts adapter kit there. It's looking good in the, in the dash. Um, got those three bolts underneath there as well, hold the, uh, they take most of the weight. The only thing I'm unsure about coming through the front here, I've got one of these nolithane spaces at the front. There's a bit of play there and I haven't really tightened them right up because I don't know how much you get a, how much pressure you put on this, this arm because there was a fair bit going on. <laughs> And I don't want to do any damage, whatever it's pulling up here, you know, potentially could snap something. So I'm just going to leave that with a bit of play in it for now. It's almost done up there. There's not much wiggle room there. So it might be all right. It might be designed to have a bit of flex in this plate here, but if anyone knows uh, how that works, leave a comment so I don't bust the steering column after all that work. 
So yeah, this is the loom uh, for the gauge behind the GTS dash and also the standard dash. And uh, they've usually got the globes and the connectors to go straight into those old uh, gauges. But um, you can use this and just wire them into these new gauges. So I'm sending this away. Someone uh, contacted me through Facebook and we we're chatting about uh, about the gauges and he we did a bit of a, a deal. So he's gonna do that for me. Uh, in return, I'll send him a, a kit. So yeah, just gonna remove it, post it off. He'll, he'll solder them all up and do it properly. And uh, that way I can plug it back in and then this will just go straight to the gauges. And I know that they're gonna talk to the, to the senders and uh, everything, fingers crossed, should work. So I'll just rip it out now. Next job, I'm gonna relocate this oil stick um, brace bracket. As you can see, it's completely wrong. So I don't know where, what happened there, but anyway. Um, I'm just gonna fabricate a little little arm <clears throat> or a little bracket just to go on the back there. Just get a little bit of cardboard just to fashion it up the distance and then I'll bolt it to that one there and that'll be another job done. All right, so I cut out all the uh, hard work on that one, but that's pretty much done. Just fabricated that uh, new bracket there and locked it in. So, so anyway, that's uh, another one ticked off the list. All right, so a few new toys have rolled up to progress the build. So we've got, obviously this is the original T-bar that came out of it. Um, I think it was out of a Gemini. TE. There's nothing wrong with it, um, but I've decided to go the old bang shift here. So that was a bit of a purchase, but you would have seen these. Um, that's where you can just push up the gears. They're pretty cool. And I've opted for one that's actually doesn't have this casing here. So it's just the bare bones underneath. It's that style with that uh, round knob at the end. And uh, yeah, what the pr I'll propose that I'll just get that the original console and and housing on the original uh, center console and just blend it in that way. Um, just clamp and hose for the fuel, which is something you need. I've got this fan switch, uh, Davies Craig, which is that uh, electronic thematic switch for the fans. So you can actually just get, it's got a little digital readout that you just change the temperature um, and little sensor that you put on the radiator and that controls your thermo fans. Um, Mark Galvin uh, sent me these clips, which he's made. And uh, yeah, they're actually pretty cool. They're for separating the spark leads on the engine. So thanks Mark for sending those. And he's just bent up some uh, sheet metal and made those clips. And yeah, I'll just bolt them onto the block and then that will help separate those those leads so that they're uh, nice and clean in the engine bay. Some people are just really generous. So thanks again for that, Mark. It's gonna help me uh, clean up the engine bay. Got um, the oil can separator or the catch can. So this is just a cheapie off eBay, but it does the job. It's really, there's not much to it. It's, it's got a little valve that goes in there. It's dash 10, I think. So they go off the rocker covers. Uh, and this will, I'll bolt this up side to the side of the radiator and then it's just got the hose and the connectors there um, and then a little oil filter at the top air filter and yeah the two hoses will go to one can so you don't have the two on each side of the radiator to sort a little bit less clutter in the engine bay um, that was cheap it's only 120 dollars or something like that so well worth the investment to tidy that up and there some few more things ticked off the list be a quick one and just uh, restore this battery tray you can buy these brand new but as you can see there's not much really to fix it's just a little patch repair there and the rest of it's um pretty thick still so yeah I'll just sandblast it give it a patch repair and paint it again and it'll be good to go these retail for about 100 bucks I think second hand it's like anything I've found that all the original stuff on these that's rolled out of the factory or have been third party providers back in the day are all much better condition and better quality 
um, than the ones that are produced now. And many of you would know that, but I've just been comparing it. Even this, this little brake line that I bought the other day, um, the original is just looks much stronger than that. Now, I don't know why that's, whether it's flexed over time, but yeah, just the join down in that section down there, everything was just thicker on the, on the originals. Even the bracket there, there's, you know, it's thinner, weaker than the original. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that's reproduced that they've, obviously just, you know, you try and cut out material, cost of material, we try and use as less material as possible to get something out the door. And as a result, yeah, they're just not as strong as they used to be. So this tray, it's nice thick metal. I can guarantee you that, yeah, if you bought a new one, it probably wouldn't be as good as, and as thick as this anymore. So anyway, I'm just gonna fix it and um, use it again. All right, just quickly cut that out, position it. So it's definitely close enough for a battery tray. So once again, this rust blast stuff. If you've got some time in your hands, chuck that in there and it will just keep going as long as you, uh, as long as there's water there and it'll come back in a day's time and that'll be done. All right, now that that's done, it's time to weld up this battery tray once and for all and get it painted and then we'll uh, have another one ticked off. All right, that's done. She ain't pretty, but she's functional and will last years to come. So that is going in the assembly pile. Okay, a bit more of an update. So since the last recording, it's been about a week. Just to give you a bit of an update as to why this one's taken so long. I've been doing, I've been doing some landscaping. As you know, I've done the irrigation, doing some landscaping around my house. I could really do a whole series on, on that build because it's a huge build as well. And it's taken a huge amount of effort and resources to get into where it is at the moment. So I'm doing a retaining wall that's probably Oh, it's about close to 80 metres long, about five deep, five sleepers high most of the way. Um, and that's retaining a whole sort of landscaped garden area the side of the house so that in a dry area you can have a little bit of uh, green grass and some, and some garden. So that's been pretty critical to staying, staying up here and keeping the house, you know, livable and also enjoyable around it instead of just having a, a dusty old dry rabbit shit and dry grass. So anyway, so we've got... The filter, which I got, it's a low rise, but it is still a three inch rise, um, which is gonna lead us to some issues, which for clearance, 100%. So that, as you can see, that's not gonna fit under the bonnet. Um, I was told it was gonna with that two inch riser, but it uh, just won't. So that one of those one inches uh, rises is gonna have to come out, if not both of them. I think probably one might squeeze it in. And yeah, and that should fit it under. Obviously got to cut this bolt. And I'll just put a low, you can buy these sort of low rise washers, screw tops off eBay. they will just button that up. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's nice and covered now. You do away with the glad wrap. Someone contacted me through um, the Unique Parts kits. Uh, his name's Tom. And he's actually wiring up the loom to accept these EB gauge kits, which is fantastic. So once it's done, that, that loom will just be basically plug and play straight out of these gauges and into the main loom, which harness, which goes under there. I've actually sent him the main loom as well because he's gonna have a look at the whole thing. And yeah, this is the rear loom that goes off into the back of the ute. If you didn't know, that's your park brake um, sensor there. And that's the main loom that connects along under the door there. So that's in pretty good nick. Well, you know, it's in, it's in decent nick. I showed him a photo, he said it was go. Well, I'm running with that. So now there's a couple of things left to do to dress up the, the engine. And one of them is put these oil catch cans hoses here. Got two of them. And assemble the can, I reckon about here. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so this is the kit that I got off eBay. <clears throat> Catch cam with a filter. You've got the dash 10 fittings, a couple of straights, 90 degree 
in a slight taper angle, you got the hose. So it's not uh, a huge job, but the biggest, the toughest part would probably be just finding a place for this to mount. I'm just gonna put it on one side and I think I'm just gonna put it here near the, um, near the filler because over on this side, you've got the breather line there. So that gets in the way. So this side, even though you've got the radiator hose there, it's not the end of the world. So this section here is pretty freed up. So you could probably even slot it into that, into there somewhere. Anyway, I'm just gonna have a play around with it, see what I can work up and then we'll uh, get it happening. Okay, so the mounting bracket system on this cheapy that I got, I didn't think about it when I bought it, it's pretty shit actually, cause it's just flat and there's no flat mounts on here. A lot of them come with this circular, sort of like a um, 90 degree bend with a circle cut out at the top and you sort of suspend it. So that could sort of work there. The idea with the catch can in my research, correct me if I'm wrong, is that, uh, yeah, obviously it, it traps the oil va vapor coming out of the rocket covers and has a little drain in there that you can release later on when it builds up. And I'm unfortunately I've misplaced that, which is a real bastard because I have to buy another one now. Um, so anyway, it's really a bit of fabricating to try and sort out a solution there with these brackets unless I cut them off and I don't really want to do that seeing it's brand new. So I don't see how moving it from there to where I propose it to be here is going to be any different because it sort of looks a bit more symmetrical. It's on this uh, radiator support shroud that's already got a flat surface. Admittedly, it is on the radiator, so I don't know if that's a big no-no. Anyway, it's it's um, centered. So you sort of got the, the air filter and then you got that filter. So that sort of runs your eyes. Then you've got these 90 degree turns where you can go just a little bit of hose to each rocket cover. So you know, actually will look a lot more symmetrical with those two hoses going there as opposed to like one long hose going over to there and a short hose. Clearance wise, I think it should be all right um, because obviously you got the latch there, but it's sort of the nose cone bumps it up a bit. And you can see, even though we're gonna take that spacer off, the, uh, one of those spacers at least off and to drop that down because it's sitting too high, this is still gonna be well within that height. So I reckon I might just run with that. This was 80 bucks, I think, this cool oil catch can. As you know, the radiator shroud was reasonably cheap as well. The only thing is if I do decide to change to a BA shroud or an AU shroud, this will have to get changed because that is obviously sitting in the, in the spot where that big fan goes. Um, but for now, I reckon for the sake of symmetry and keeping everything balanced and also ease of installation. I'm just gonna run with that and I'll probably get fried in the comments, but uh, you can't win them all. Yeah, look, I think the symmetry's there. It's pretty efficient. It's up the front, you know, uh, where the airflow is. So it's gonna keep relatively cool, but you know, it is standing out more than if you were to hide it down here. However, you, won't, you, you don't have as much hose running through the front. And I like the balance between the two hoses there with the, uh, the rocket covers and, and everything else. And you still got access to drain it down here. Um, the only risks may be the height. I think it's, I think it'd scrape in and also, you know, having oil potentially near, uh, the radiator, if there was a leak or whatever, could be messy, but I think I'm just going to run with it for now that I'm running that radiator. If I was to swap with a 
Ague fan, BA fan, then I'm going to have to just lose that whole setup and do something different. But for now, I'm testing out that setup. And you've just got to get things done, make the decision, roll on to the next one. And uh, this one's step closer to the finish line. Well, you certainly can't underestimate how much work is involved in just the engine. You know, I've been going on this for a few months now. Um, it's cost and, and uh, experience, obviously, but yeah, there's so many little things you've got to tweak and buy and get right in order to dress the engine just to get the thing to a point where you can then put the guards on. I've, I don't want to put the guards on until I've done all this dirty work because, you know, I'm just going to scratch them or something's going to happen and, you know, you don't want that, so you've got all this work. So I'm pretty much 95% there. Now from here, once I get the loom back, I'm going to start uh, booking in the auto uh, electrician to come and help me just put it all in the car. Got to restore the window wipers, the windscreen wipers still. Um, just little small things. I've spoken to a bloke about some wheels, so they're going to be on order. I've spoken to a bloke about um, the interior, so cool trim. You probably would have seen him. Uh, he does some really reasonably priced kits that he'll send out to you. And you can do the install yourself. Um, so that's that's probably going to be the next thing that's going to be happening. I'm going to be installing and the fuel hose, which I didn't get around to this time. And a bloke called Tim Eddy has decided who's is one of the uh, guys that's watched the channel before. We've been speaking about uh, getting this thing running, and he's, uh, he's he was a mechanic, he's, he's trucking now, but he's decided to come out and help me and uh, start the thing as soon as I get it ready. So. As soon as I get this uh, electrics and everything started and all, all sorted, I'm gonna give Tim a call and he's gonna come out. We're gonna get this thing started. I know it's been dragging on forever, but this is, uh, I'm just taking my time. Obviously the baby doesn't th help things speed things up anymore, but yeah, it's getting done, it's almost there. Probably won't, I'm not too sure if I'll make the old WB meetup, unfortunately, which is a big shame with this thing, at least anyway, I might go and just have a look. For those who've been supporting the uh, the business of the unique parts for the adapter kits, they've been going red hot still. I've just about to release the, well, I am releasing this week or next week, the Autometer kits, which everyone's been asking me about. I've done some R&D and development and the fitment for those, and they'll be available on the unique parts website, as I said, mentioned in a week or two. So keep an eye out for that. Those who haven't, if those who subscribe to the newsletter will get product updates for that website anyway. So if you don't, jump on the website, subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get an update when it's released. Um, I've had a few people wanting them, so yeah, I'm looking forward to pumping them out. Um, WB taillights still on the, in production, complicated build that one. So all these things, you know, I'm, so, I'm obviously running this business as a result of doing this build, which is fantastic and uh, that slows things up as well. Hope you got something out of this. It's been a few things obviously we've, we've, uh, we've gone through that, um, they're not exciting things, but they're things you need to do if you're doing your own build. So hopefully you got something out of that. If you haven't, buy some merch. It also supports the channel. I'm thinking about bringing out some, maybe some limited design tees for the WB. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't, follow me on Barnsley's underscore builds on Instagram. You get all the updates in between each episode. Thanks for following along for such a long journey so far. We're almost there. Stick with me and I'll see you on the next one.